So to share one of those passages that um, has made many people stop and think and maybe grow in their understanding of the good news and, and how it's good news for them in their place and their time has been the Beatitudes because it, in some ways it really starts with that piece of the, huh, what's going on here? Um, so I'm going to read the first three Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. It said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. These first four would not, we wouldn't think of being poor as being blessed or having lost someone we love as being blessed or even being humble. In fact, we presently live in a time and a place where the only way that anybody thinks that you are really living um, your full life and being truly whatever you want to call it, that manning up or being strong and getting what you deserve is by yelling and screaming and tearing down others with meek is just the opposite. Um, meek is with some of those um, traditions of the um, sit-ins and the nonviolent protests that truly were of the, yes, um, you may hit me, you may beat me up, and you may throw me out or throw me in jail, but I am going to, in peace and in love, continue to stand and show that I don't agree with these pieces. So when we look at these blessed people, we say, wait a minute, I'm not sure I want to be part of that. Um, I want to be the person who is the strongest in the room. I want to be the person who's the richest. I want to be the person who has, is completely surrounded by the people I love and that I don't have to feel that sense of emptiness. And in some ways we try so hard to avoid feeling that mourning. So I think it is this question that has caused people to stop and say, if these people are blessed and I don't really, I've never really sought to be one of these, how does this fit into this story of Christ coming as our savior and bringing us hope? And for me, the more that I see in scripture, the more I understand that the good news is for those of us that are broken. Um, those of us that look around at our life and say, neither do I know all the answers, nor do I have everything is in perfect place. And the good news that God is going to restore us, the good news that he is bigger than this moment or this time, is good news not for the person who has everything they want, um, even the messages of the Jubilee or the messages of God saying, here's the thing, if I've given you a lot, I expect you to share it, um, is not really good news for that person who has everything. It's good news for the person who doesn't have enough, that the God that we're talking about is a God that cares enough about them to want them to have enough. Um, so when I look at these, part of it is this huge piece of understanding that our God is a God who cares deeply about those of us that are broken, those of us whose life isn't perfect, and maybe it looks shiny on the outside, but we are mightily aware that it isn't perfect and shiny, and that God's goal is for us to know that blessing. So if you're in that place right now where you're feeling helpless or mourning the loss, and our losses are not just of people we love. Um, right now, the losses we encounter include everything from our favorite restaurant, which isn't life-threatening, I understand, but it's a part of the comforts that we experience in this lifetime. Or the loss of just the things and the people around us that help us know we're okay. So what I want in this passage, I think it invites us to truly think about how is God helping us realize that even though we're broken, he has a plan, a plan to make us whole, a plan to 
fill those places that seem empty and scary and frightening and give us more than we ever imagined and not in the physical sense because in the meek they shall inherit the earth it isn't by force that we can take what God has given us it is by humbly giving our lives to him that we will receive all that he has given to us and when we mourn indeed if we turn to God then he is there to comfort us to reassure us that even in death that that isn't the end of the story the victory is won in the resurrection of Christ and the resurrection of our lives and that being poor in things in this world is not the store not what's really important if we have treasures that rust and here's one of the things that's been interesting as I write my will and figure out the those kinds of pieces is that I look around and say what are my niece and nephews kids kids going to want or think of the things I've collected and um, for the most part I think they're going to think there's nothing here that they're the least bit interested in um, I'm a little maybe a little part of their history but not not yet and not probably ever in the sense of how far we travel from each other will they look at all my stuff and say oh this will remind me of Aunt Beth or whatever I become to those next generations where we're rich is in our relationship with God and the love he has for us and the understanding that his love gives us as individuals a value beyond any of the things that we have. So I invite you to go to those Beatitudes and read and understand how much the relationship with God changes everything in all of those places of brokenness, all of those places of uncertainty, how he steps in and says, you know, you think this is the worst thing, but it is the best thing because in all of those things you turn to me. So let us turn to God and let him heal our brokenness, our uncertainties, and give us the strength and the comfort we need for the days ahead. Will you pray with me? Holy God, you have blessed us. You have sent us your Son. You have given us hope and light in the darkness. Help us, O oh God, to open our eyes and see that we are blessed, regardless of what seems broken. Ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.